Quinn has been out there in planes for us actually for several days now. Patrick, you've gotten a real sense of, of what planes is all about, who the people there are. Um, it's it's you know that you can't really understand what a tight knit community is until you go there and you actually see it and feel it for yourself. Gravier, I mean, there are a lot of media here, let's be honest, of right. course, that really just showcases the legacy of Miss Rosalind Carter, and we have been treated so nicely. <laughs> I mean, we are visitors to this town, and the hospitality here has just been tremendous. If this were my hometown, I don't know if I would have been as friendly to all the media showing up, but no. Uh, the character of Plains, I can't speak high, higher of it. Uh, you mentioned that a lot of people here, they just consider him Mr. Jimmy, Miss Rosalind. Um, I think that's the case probably with this gentleman I just spoke to, Roddy. Um, first, what brought you out here today? You just saw the motorcade go by to Maranatha. What did the Carters, what did Miss Rosalind, what did she mean to you? Uh, incredible inspiration. Uh, I met President Carter almost 50 years ago. He came to my hometown, Thomasville. He was the governor of Georgia at the time, and he was the grand marshal for our Rose Parade. So our Boy Scout troop got a chance to meet him thereafter. And as I was telling my colleagues here, the, just being in his presence was serene. So ever since then, I've been a loyal follower of both the works of himself and Mrs. Carter. I have seven of their books that I was fortunate enough to get autographed, and I've sat in multiple Sunday school classes taught by President Carter. So I just had to be here today. It's sort of like losing your grandmother. They mean, they mean a heck of a lot. What are you feeling? How did you feel seeing that motorcade go by? Obviously, she'll go to that service, or, or the motorcade will, it'll be the final funeral service. They will take the casket back to their family estate. She'll be laid to rest, and she will be laid to rest here in Plains. Were there any feelings you were feeling seeing this? I, initially, there was a little pain, you know, because, again, it felt like you lost a grandmother. But then at the same time, when you live the type of life that she's lived, and the whole world is responsive, and you just continuously hear people say, thank you, thank you, thank you and what a blessing you were in so many ways and so many lives, it, it gives you a greater appreciation of what this world can be if people just show a little compassion and patience like Mrs. Carter and President Carter have done. Roddy, thanks so much. I think you're right. Uh, just a sign of appreciation and, and paying it forward. We're certainly seeing that. Back to you guys. Patrick, thank you so much. And of course, we are watching the Carter family. And you have probably noticed along with us that former President Carter is among yes. them. Uh, he is 99 years old, uh, and it meant uh, it was very important to him to be able to attend yesterday's service in Atlanta. He made the trip. He had a, a suit specially made because uh, he is very frail. Yes. He's been receiving hospice care at home for uh, the better part of the last year or so, uh, and uh, he wanted to be there, and he wanted to be at this service today. So uh, even in his frail state, uh, he wanted to come. He wouldn't have missed it. He uh, wouldn't have missed wouldn't it. Have his, missed his grandson, um, Jason, hmm. spoke yesterday, Jason Carter. He, he really has been kind of the, uh, the spokesperson for the family uh, over the past year or so as we've watched, you know, uh, the former president go into hospice care. And then Mrs. Carter, of course, diagnosed with dementia just a short while back and, and then passing away on the 19th. And Jason said... Um, Jason said, you know, I, I believe that he's been hanging on and he's, he's been staying here for her. He did not want to leave her alone. He did not want to leave her alone. And I don't think he wanted to be left alone. Correct. Uh, you know, he said that as long as Rosalind was by his side, he always knew that there was someone who loved and supported him. And you know, when you reach the White House, what is it they say that, you know, uh, you have very few friends. If you when want you a friend to, at the White House, get a get dog. Get a dog, right? Yes. Well, he always had Rosalind Carter. And Judy Woodruff, a, a seasoned, long-time, well-respected journalist who covered the Carters for many, many years, said there would have been no presidency for Jimmy Carter had it not been for Rosalind Carter. She actually spoke at the service yesterday, too. Well, it is just so poignant to watch the president uh, be positioned and to, to come into this building, this church that that he was he was so instrumental in 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 the church and in the running of the church, choosing the pastor, Correct. teaching Sunday school. Uh, he was a Christian and he lived his life uh, according to Christian values. He lived his faith, right? He lived his faith. He mowed the he mowed the lawn out there at the church, weeded. 
mowed the lawn, made the cross that's hanging there in the sanctuary, actually made the wooden bowls that they use for offering oh, when, wow. they have the, uh, when they have their services uh, on Sundays. So, and that gentleman that Patrick interviewed a few minutes ago said, I went to some of the Sunday school classes there that, that's right. that former President Carter taught. And when well, he did teach, you, a lot of people showed up. Secrets, they had to get there them. by 6 a.m. They had to be screened by the Secret Service before they actually entered the church because the former president was teaching. That's right. I can only imagine what that must have been like. What a thrill to be able to attend Bible study right. uh, conducted by a former president of the United States.